Um, so we mentioned that um, on the cancer side, um, there are uh, mutations in the tumor and through MHC or HLA, they are presented onto the cell surface. And then um, in the tumor, we also know that the T cell has to infiltrate. If the T cells don't really get into the tumor, then they certainly cannot see mutations. But even after they get into the tumor, in order to recognize the tumor as foreign, we need this thing called a T cell receptor to really recognize or distinguish cell from non-self. And so how is that done? Um, every human being, you know, like every individual, we have only two copies of the chromosome. Um, but in order to really recognize self with non-self, the TCR has to be able to recognize millions of different things, especially uh, to recognize like viral uh, bacteria infection or some fungus, you know, these type of pathogens. How is that done? Um, this is through a process called the VDJ recombination. So basically um, in the, any uh, like, um, well, you, you like a multi uh, multicellular species with kind of a T cells, you will see the uh, situation like this. Um, in the T cells, there there is a region of the genome which code for a T cell receptor. It's a gene fragment, which means it's not like normally as you would think as as one gene is a fragment. Um, and so in here, there are many V fragments. Uh, the orange is a D fragment and blue is the J fragment. So in here, you can see uh, for T cells, all the Vs are, are next to each other. And then there is one D and a whole bunch of J, another D, a whole bunch of J, another D and a whole bunch of J. And so um, in VDJ recombination, what happens is that um, the cell will randomly uh, pick um, one V, one D, and one J, and stitch them together. Um, actually, the 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 D J uh, recombination happen first, and then is the V D uh, recombination. And you you stitch them together. Um, you you can see here um, if the the V that's picked is the second one in this DNA that the ones before this will still be present, but the one after that will be deleted from the DNA. So, so for example, if you pick this V and this D, everything in between will be deleted from the DNA. And so this two will be stitched together on the DNA. And if you pick this D and this J, everything in between will be deleted, but the J after that, you can see here, the J after that will be still kept. And so at the very end, only the VDJ that's really close to each other um, will have a chance to be made into a functional T cell receptor. And the things outside, you know, this V or this J are not really used. So it's only middle one that's important. Um, so there are ways to do um, the TCR sequencing in, in, usually you do this in the blood, or you can also do this in the tumor. And this is using a multiplex PCR reaction to amplify out all the possible VDJ pairs. And uh, um, so basically you have a, a, a one V in here, one you know, like PCR primer on this, on this, on this, all the V and all the J. And so that will amplify out all the VDJ pairs. And after that, there, there needs to be a size selection because the non-productive VJ will also get amplified, but you don't want those. You just want the correct size VDJ that's closest to each other to be amplified out. And the, the final result, what you get is you say, okay, this VDJ sequence is this abundant. Another VDJ sequence is at this abundance and another VDJ is at this abundance. Um, one thing we want to mention that VDJ recombination, not only the combination creates the diversity, but also um, in order for this recombination to happen, you cut the DNA in here, you cut the DNA in here, and you try to stitch these two together. And this stitching process is never perfectly accurate. And so in the stitching location, there could be small insertion, deletion, and mutations in there. And that creates additional diversity into the TCR. And so every individual, even though you only have, you know, just 
one copy of the VDJ segment from mom and another VDJ segment from dad. Um, from this VDJ recombination, not only from the combination, but also from the, the end creating the small indels and insertions, um, every one of us is able to create, in theory, millions of different TCRs that can recognize different antigens in, in, the, in the sample. And so when you do a, a TCR a sequencing, for example, in the blood, what are some of the interesting things we see? Um, uh, one thing we see is that um, because uh, cymus is what is used to, to train the TCR to call what is self and non-self, all the TCR that recognize self will be killed in the thymus, whereas those that are not recognizing self are allowed to circulate in the body in order to recognize um, outside pathogen. Um, after puberty, our uh, human uh, cymus will go away. And so most of what we have in our body are the T cells that were trained during puberty. If they have a chance to be amplified um, through stimulation, you know, um, say it's see, it seen some uh, mutations or seen some pathogens it amplified, it cr like create multiple copies of itself. Um, then they will you know, live longer. But if uh, a T cell has been around for a long time, there's never a stimulation, over time, it will die. And, um, and that's why if you look at the T cell diversity of some very interesting observation is as people age, because our, our thymus pretty much uh, lose function, um, the overall T cell diversity in the body decreases. And uh, also male decrease faster than, than female. Um, and so this probably explain why male have more cancer incidence than female and have shorter life exp expectancy. So female has kind of a slightly better, I guess, uh, uh, ma longer maintained immune health. And so um, overall TCR diversity, if you look at age and gender, there's actually a pretty good curve. And so you can imagine if you just monitor people's uh, TCR diversity, you can say, okay, normally a male at uh, 50 years old should have this high T-cell diversity, but then if an individual has a very low T-cell diversity, they have to be careful because this indicate that the patient can, or this, this individual, not necessarily a patient, can have mutation. But if the T cells that's supposed to recognize that, that mutation is gone, there might be cancer development and the, the, the individual's T cell won't be there to really recognize it. And so um, this is one study we did in uh, published in 2020, where you look at the healthy donors, you can see that they have very high um, uh, T cell diversity, but for Hodgkin's lymphoma, this is actually a kind of cancer um, where it happens fairly early um, in young adults, um, you know, usually uh, even teenagers or, or 20, 30 year old, uh, people can have uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. And the, you can see the newly diagnosed patient have much, much low level of T cell diversity. So even though they are only 30 years old, their T cell diversity is like a very old man. Um, and so also if we look at those relapsed patients which have just failed many, many different drug treatment, um, they, they are kind of metastatic and you know, hopefully these patients, um, their T cell diversity could be even lower. And interestingly, when we look at um, uh, how these patients uh, respond to immunotherapy, and so this is the newly diagnosed, and if we divide up this relapse group later on to give them immunotherapy, one thing we notice is that those patients that actually responded better, they had a complete response, meaning that the tumor is totally gone, they have still overall higher T cell diversity. Whereas those patients that have, you know, a partial response or even progressive disease, with progressive disease, meaning the patient don't respond very well, they have a, a lower overall T cell diversity. And so basically the, you need to have enough different T cells to recognize mutations for you to have the chance of you know going to the tumor and say ah that's the bad guy and so in your body in your blood 
T cell diversity is definitely a good thing. And interestingly, when we look at the patient um, after, so this is before the patient were treated. When we compare the before treatment to after treatment, you can see um, the, those complete responders, when you treat with uh, immunotherapy like PD-1, their overall T cell diversity increases. It's like, oh, you, you, you make sure that, you know, um, the T cell that previously only had one copy, maybe now had a chance to make a doublet of it, like a, make a clone of itself. And that's actually a good thing to ensure that, you know, you don't, when you have only one copy left, you don't want this T cell to die, but you know, with, with immunotherapy, okay, now you, you created another copy of it, right? So that can increase the T cell diversity, but um, interestingly for the partial responders and especially for the uh, progressive disease, you don't really see this type of T cell diversity increase. And so um, we can see that um, T cell diversity is actually a very good measure of immune health and also can be predictive of uh, immunotherapy response. Um, in recent years, there are uh, technologies such as 10x genomics that allow people to do not only single cell RNA seq, but in the T cells, you can specifically amplify the VDJ. And based on the cell barcode, you can match the TCR, uh, T cell receptor to the cell that you have the single cell expression. And so um, this is also a study published last year where they look at um, the TCR clones and, and ask which of T cell, which T cells are uh, clonal expanded. By clonal expansion, we mean that uh, multiple T cells have the same TCR clone, identical TCR clone. That means there is a clonal expansion. The T cells is making clones of itself because the T cell is identical. And then for those expanded clones, you can ask, do their expression look different from the non-expanded clones? Because in the tumor, or interestingly, with immunotherapy, you want the T cells that recognize the bad guy, the, the mutations in the cancers, to have the chance to expand. So in the tumors, clonal expansion is a good thing. You want specific clones to be activated and start doing the killing job. Right, so um, now, so TCR sequencing in the single cell is very important to help you figure out, oh, those expanded clones actually have different expression from those non-expanded clones, which are just parking lots there, they're just waiting. Um, and so, um, of course, we still need to discover what those tumor uh, those what those TCR really recognizing, what antigens do they recognize? And so this is one study that's published uh, uh, a couple of years ago, where um, they look at uh, TCRs that specifically recognize KRAS mutations in, in melanoma. So melanoma cancers have very frequent KRAS and BRAF mutations. These are inside the cell. Um, the KRAS and the BRAF are, are cell signaling molecules inside the cell. But if they are mutated, their protein product, when it's uh, degraded, can have a chance to be presented onto the cell surface. And so an antigen presented a KRAS mutation can be recognized by the T cell as, uh, as um, a um, uh, kind of the antigen to, to create an immune, immune response. And so you can imagine if you have an antibody that recognize the presented mutation, or if you have a TCR that recognize the, the MHC presented antigen, you can engineer those T cells to specifically kill the, uh, the, the cancer cells. And so this study actually was uh, from uh, Steve Rosenberg looking at um, a T cell receptor that can recognize a presented KRAS mutation as a cancer therapy. So you can create many, many copies of those T cells and then infuse to the patient. And recently, there is another study from Bert Vogelstein where they look at a CAR, which means that there's an antibody which recognize MHC presented p53 mutations and then th those t cells will only go to the tumors with those p53 mutation and so so basically car is the receptor is the antibody or you know the uh, and, uh, protein that recognize the um the uh, tumor antigen whereas tcr you are using kind of the tcr to recognize mhc presented um uh, mutations yeah, so you can see here, um, TCR is really important 
to understand the overall immune health, to understand which T cells get activated in tumor and have clonal expansion. And you can even create a TCR specific T cells as kind of a special weapon and uh, amplify them and infuse them into the patient as a type of immunotherapy. Okay, um, so that's good for today.